So this year, I thought it was about time I started challenging myself and get some new photography skills and things like that and just get out and about and have a bit of fun. So I got out and about and see whether I could find a pheasant shoot and then see if they'd let me photograph them because I've never done that in the past. And to my surprise, they said yes. You said yes! It did help that my son-in-law actually shoots with them as well. But in this video, what I'm going to do is share some lessons with you, the gear that I took out with me, and also the mistakes that I made, plus a few bucket shots I never even thought I was going to get. So hopefully this will give you some ideas so you can get out and about, rather than sitting at home watching YouTube or TV. Just get out there and have some fun. Hey everyone, how you all doing? Hope you're all cheeky boo. Now in today's video, what I'm going to do is share with you how to plan and shoot an outdoor event. And although this is a pheasant shoot, these tactics or principles are bloody going to help you with any type of outdoor event. Be it a sports event like running or a water sports event like powerboat racing or even a surf competition and things like that. And it'll probably even help you with things like a kid's party or even a wedding, dare I say it. I, I wasn't in four weddings and a funeral. Now, first things first, this is what I learned in the army. It's the six Ps. It's proper preparation prevents particularly poor performance. Now, the word particular is actually replaced with someone else in the army. If you know what that is, let me know in the comments down below. Do you walk the walk? By that, what I mean is if it's something you've never done before, what you want to do is do a bit of research, find some other people who are doing it. I went and searched Instagram to find people who have been out to pheasant shoots or hunts and things like that to see what type of photos they take, just to give you some ideas. You can copy people at the end of the day because replication at the end of the day is the best form of compliment. I don't mean copy them and things like that, but it'll just give you some ideas. Write them down in a book and then you'll be on your way. Next, you need to make a list of the gear you want to take. And try to be as minimalistic as you can, because if you're like me, I end up taking hundreds of gear with me. But this time I didn't. I just took a few things with me, and I'll let you know what they are in a sec. Plus, a list of the shots that you want to take to tell that story. And the last thing you need to do before you go, the night before you go, make sure your batteries are charged, because I know how many times I've gone out before and not charged all of them. And pack all your gear. Now I know they're pretty simple, but you'll be surprised at how many times you forget to pack your gear the night before. And to be honest with you, I ended up checking mine two or three times before anyway. But then that way it means you can get up nice and fresh in the morning, throw your bag in the back of the car, and then off you go. Now as for the gear that I took, I did take the drone along, even though I didn't end up using it. Plus I took the R3 with the RF 100 to 500, plus the R6 Mark R. R? I'm not a bloody pirate, am I? Don't touch my dirt. Anyway, the R6 Mark II with the RF 24 to 70 f2.8. That was all I took in camera gear. Plus, I also packed in there the little DJI Pocket 3, just in case. And stuck it all into the smaller version of the PM Nomatic. So as for the shoot itself, what you want to do is get your little book out just like this and then write down the stages of the story. Now every story has a beginning, middle and end at the end of the day. So I first off label these off like this and then start to think about what type of photos I want to take with those. Plus at the bottom of that, what I also do is list those bucket shots that I'd really like to get. And I'll show you what I got at the end of the day. I didn't get all of them, but I managed to get two out of three. And as for the pheasant shoot, it's as much social as it is the shoot side of it. So what you want to think about is when people get there, what do they do? So they all pull up in their four by fours to get a few shots of those. And they all start having a chin wag and a bit of a you know, catch up. They might not have seen each other for a few weeks and things like that. So it's really, really good to get those group shots just to start things off. And don't forget the dogs as well, because they're part and parcel of this. So get a few shots of them and them running around or in the back of the cabs and things like that. Plus, they have a little competition where they guess how many birds are going to shoot during the day. And then the winner at the end of it gets that total money, I think, given to them. I did have a go, but I didn't win. Now, the middle of the story, obviously, is going to be the shoot itself. But it's not just the shoot, is it? You've got to think of things that they do while they're there. So it's the flushing of the birds, um, the dogs retrieving the birds when they've been shot and things like that. Plus, they break for lunch and also they have a few drinks as they're going around. But only a few because it is live firing after all. And then you come to the end of the story, don't you? So that's where they line all the birds up, they find out how many they've shot, see who won that guess at the beginning and things like that. And then everything's packed up and off they go home. So that's the way you set up the story. As for the shots themselves during the day, what you want to do is get a range of different ones, don't you? You want to get some nice wide angle ones showing the fields and different things like that. Some medium ones, some close focus ones, and some really high detail ones just like this. 
not forgetting plenty of shots of the dogs and some nice casual ones of people walking around and things like that. And then that way you've got a really nice set of photos, haven't you? And what I'll do is I'll make a montage of them at the end of here if you're interested in that so you can have a look at them. Plus, don't forget those bucket shots I actually got. So all in all, I got just over a thousand photos and then I nailed it down to about a hundred of them, which I actually did in colour and black and white because that black and white sort of photos, they add that bit of drama, don't they? Now, there was one thing that really annoyed me, to be honest with you, and it was a schoolboy error, and I told you about the six Ps at the beginning, didn't I? But it was that 1.4 times converter. I actually left it in the wagon, um, and I could have done with it on this shot here. As you can see, I've managed to get him anyway, but look at this drone shot. I went back to the field and got a drone shot of where I was actually stood and then where he was, because at these shoots, they're spread out right across big fields. And the thing is, is because it is live firing, you have to be careful. Um, and because when you get into one position, then you, and again, you have to be behind them, don't you? Yeah, but when you get into one position, you can't really go moving around that much. So I was disappointed that I didn't have that because I think I would have been able to get in a little bit closer to this one. That 1.4 times converter would have given you that extra reach. You don't have to worry about f-stop and things like that. It was a bright sunny day, so it would have been bloody brilliant to get that zoomed in, in between the trees and things like that. So in a minute, what I'm going to do is pull together that montage for you, because then that'll give you an idea if you're out and about doing a similar event. Don't have to be a shoot. Like I said, it can be any type of event out and about there. You've still got to tell the same sort of story, haven't you? So those bucket shots, like I said, I got two out of the three I wanted to get. The first one I wanted to get was the cartridges shooting out the back of a gun when they break it with the smoker as well. And I'd been trying all day long for this one. And funnily enough, this was my last actual click of the button, last shot that I took on the day. And I think, personally anyway, I think I nailed it. Maybe the shutter speed could have been a little bit faster on there. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. The second one was to get a shot of the dogs running towards me rather than sideways with one of the birds in the mouth. And I took loads of shots of the dogs during the day because like, they are absolutely awesome, these dogs, what they do, how controlled they are and everything else and the soft mouth that they've got when they bring the bird back. They don't damage it in any way, shape or form. But the side-on ones, you know, they're, they're okay. They're nice, they're good. But I really wanted that head-on one. And this is the one that I got. I think it's the best one out of the lot. Again, what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. And the final bucket shot that I really wanted to get was as the bird was flying through the air and it's just hit by the shot um, because what they do is they fold in the middle of the air and then they come down and everything else like that. And again, I was trying for that all day long. And I think, to be honest with you, the mistake I made was not having a fast enough shutter speed on there. This is the only one I really got that was close to it. I mean, it's okay, I suppose, but at the end of the day, what I'd love to have had, like this, one of the guys just shooting and the bird up in the air at the same time, that would have really nailed it. But I'll save that one for next season. Anyway, the montage is coming up at the end of this. Um, hopefully this has given you some ideas and you've liked it and it's been useful for you. And if it has, do all that usual YouTube stuff like hitting the bell or hitting the like button. You know what to do. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Stay safe out there. Have fun. And above all, keep smiling. See ya.